So at this point, if you've been into reptiles at all, you probably know that one of the most popular in vogue species of snake right now is this little one, the Mexican black king snake. This is O'Malley. He is our male Mexican black king snake. So these guys, it seemed like overnight, but it was a couple years, went from being like a $40 to $60 animal to sometimes I've seen them as like $250 for a hatchling sometimes. And there's a lot of different reasons why that is. The Asian market opened up a lot. A lot of YouTube reptile people got very popular and they promoted these guys like crazy so everybody else wanted them to. But there's something really cool about having an all black snake. All white snakes too. There's just something cool about that. Apologies for the iguana in the background. Um, but there's more than just the Mexican black king snakes for solid black or near solid black snakes. Because sometimes not even these guys can be pure jet black. They can have some white scales usually under their chins or on their bellies. And so even though I've seen a couple different, you know, YouTube videos of people talking about different ones, I want to throw in my two cents because I think there's a few out there that they've missed and I want to highlight a little bit. So let's get into it. So obviously, you know, there's the Mexican black king snake here. There's another colubrid that's found, you know, in a very similar area to these guys, and that is the black milk snake. The black milk snake is a really cool snake because unlike these guys, they are born that tricolor, very iconic king snake color. And then as they get older, as they shed, they get darker and darker and darker until they are jet black like these guys. Only difference is they are one of the largest species of milk snake around and can achieve lengths of almost six feet long versus these guys are in that, you know, three and a half, four to four and a half foot long range, depending on their feeding and everything like that. So there's a really cool snake just like that. Um, that being said, there are more snakes than just the ones that come naturally occurring black like these and the black king snake and the black milk snakes. There are some that have a bunch of different morphs as well, and I'll talk about those in just a second. So we have these guys, we have the black milk snakes. We also have, in my opinion, a very underrated species, again a North American colubrid, and that is the black rat snake. Just like the king, the milk snakes, they aren't born solid black. They're born kind of that, you know, mottled gray brown color that a lot of baby rat snakes are. And as they get older, they get darker and darker and darker until you'll actually see a very large, again, some of those rat snakes, the black rats get very long, upwards of a six foot long jet black snake. And then sometimes they'll have like a little white under their chin. That's a very cool snake. They're very inexpensive. And so I should probably keep that. I should probably make note of that. So these guys are, have gotten pretty expensive. Black rat snakes, they're not very. I think they're still sitting around under $100. The black milk snakes, they're a little bit more pricey. They're more close order to, I think, around $500 or something like that. Um, another very good alternative to a Mexican black king snake, if that's kind of what you're looking for, another solid black snake, is the black African house snakes. So out, house snakes are kind of like their equivalent of our garter snakes. They're just kind of around, they're not a threat at all, and they're just kind of in and around people all the time. They're usually kind of like an olive brown color, but they have a couple different morphs, including like a T-positive, and I, they may have a, a true amelanistic, but they also have a melanistic, which means more melanin, darker, blacker, that comes in a black form, and that is the African black house, the black African house snake. Sorry about that, getting a little tongue-tied. They're still fairly inexpensive. Now, at this point, it's going to start getting a little bit rare and a little bit more expensive. So one that I think people normally don't think about is a Russian rat snake. Russian rat snakes are usually kind of like black and yellow striped, but there is a melanistic phase where they're jet black and they are a really cool snake. They can get about four and a half, five feet long. They're an Asian rat snake, so you can keep them a little bit cooler. They're pretty, they're pretty bold, so once they're comfortable, they're not defensive or strikey by any means, and they also don't have the food reaction that a lot of the kings and milks do, but they are perfectly fine just hanging out all day long. They don't hide nearly as much. They're ferroboral, and they'll just hang out with you, and they're a really cool snake that has a fairly docile personality that also eats really well and you can keep it lower temp so you don't have to worry about really high hot spots or anything like that. Another one that I don't see too often and I don't even know if too many people are working with them here in the states are the black Russian sand boas. So we all know like the Kenyan sand boas. Well there's more than just that around. There's one that's a Russian sand boa and they come in jet black phases too. They're a little bit longer, a little bit chunkier than the Kenyan sand boas and they're jet black too and they're really really cool. So that's about the kind of more common ones in the regular phases. Now we get into kind of the more like morph morphs. And so I'm going to swap him out for what a really good example of that. As seen in several of my other videos, this is Alpha. 
He is our black boa, or the IMG, which stands for increasing melanin gene. So like a lot of the other snakes on this list, they are born looking pretty normal like you normally expect to see, just like a regular boa imperator, usually a little freckly or a little bit darker. But as they get older, they get blacker and blacker and blacker. And in some cases, they're almost pure black. About the only color that Alpha still has is on his tail back here. Um, they're not all the same. Sometimes they're really black, sometimes they're not. Uh, but this is a morph, and they're a pretty well sought after and desired morph, so they're still a little on the pricier side. We're talking, you know, upwards of around $1,000 if you're throwing other morphs in there. But for single gene IMG babies, I've seen them now getting down below $1,000, but for a long time, that's what they were. Um, another one, which, and in this one, I have to preface a little bit. This is a very large snake, so this one needs to be taken with a little bit more of a grain of salt and a little bit more research and prep getting into that. Another morph is the Motley Golden Child Retic. So the Golden Child is a morph that comes from retics. They think originally came from some of the island locales, which um, are now almost essentially establishing as independent subspecies, but they are a little bit smaller. Most of the island locales of any species of animal is usually a little bit smaller. And so usually animals with Golden Child in them usually don't obtain as long and as girthy lengths as the regular mainland retics. But it's been bred into so many of them, they still get very large. We're not talking it's a dwarf or any sort of like low dwarf blooded retic at this point. And then Motley is another dark gene. And so when you put the two of them together, the Motley and the Golden Child, you sometimes can get a very black looking snake. I think Jay Brewer posted a few pictures of the very, you know, iridescent looking rainbow Motley Golden Child retic. That being said, I think retics can be very good pets, but not for everyone. And it requires a little bit of research. If you have any questions about that, I did a whole video about taking in giant snakes or anything like that. And you can watch it right here if you want to take a look at that. But those are just a few examples of some really cool solid black snakes that I think make either good substitutes, alternatives, or if you just want a bunch of different black snakes. That being said, I did not mention one earlier on the list of naturally occurring ones um, like the black milks and the Mexican black king snakes. And that's because these ones are, while they're not necessarily rare, you have to go through a little bit more of a process of attaining them one. And that is the Eastern Indigos. They're also the Texas Indigos, but they usually have a little bit more color on them. The Eastern Indigos are kind of like a Everest or apex species for a lot of people to keep. They are North America's largest and longest colubrid snake. They can easily achieve lengths over seven feet long. They are very large. Dry Marcon, that's the genus species of snake that are generalists. They will eat anything, including other snakes, including venomous snakes, which is really cool. So a lot of like Southern Texas farmers, if they ever see one, they leave it alone because they know they'll eat the diamondback rattlesnakes too. Um, they are an endangered species. So that means that if you have one and you find a breeder out of state, not only does that breeder have to have an interstate commerce permit, you have to chain one from your local Department of Wildlife so that way they can process it and ship it legally across state lines because it's an endangered species. Um, there is actually one other endemic one that is in the same category, and that is the black pine snake. So pine snakes are a species of uh, pituophis, or well, pine snakes are a type of pituophis snakes, like the bull snakes and things like that. One of the three subspecies of pine snake is the black pine pine snake and they are born fairly dark usually some stripes but depending on the bloodlines and you know through selective breeding you can get them where they're solid black i mean not a speck of color on them and also they sometimes have pie bulbs as well so in conclusion there are a lot of black snakes out there between naturally occurring ones and through morphs and they all range of size availability and price so I'll just kind of recap really quick and just kind of blow through them pretty quickly. So we're not going to talk about the MBKs because they're, you know, the gold standard that everybody wants, right? So we have the African house snake, the black phase. There's other ones too, but those you're still looking around for like an import, usually around $100, but for a captive one around $200, which is not too bad whatsoever. And then, you know, there are the black milk snakes, 
there, which are a little bit more on the pricier side. There are the black rat snakes. They get a little bit larger. They tend to have a little bit of an attitude, but they're probably the least expensive of all of them. Um, and a lot of people, you can find them pretty readily available. Um, the black milk snakes, a lot of people produce them, but they will go pretty quickly. What are you looking at, young man? What are you looking at, young man? Um, there are the black pine snakes, which aren't all that expensive, but you have to obtain the interstate uh, commerce permit, at least I think that's what it's called, if you find a breeder who doesn't live in state. Um, here in Colorado, we have a pretty big breeder of them, so I lucked out, but unfortunately I got wrapped up in a lot of other projects, so I will not be getting those. Um, there is the melanistic black Russian rat snake. Um, there is the black sand boa. There is, what are you doing, silly butt? You are so silly. Um, there is a black version of the Thayeri or variable king snake, which I forgot to mention earlier. Sorry about that. There's a lot, just to point that out, is really what I'm getting at. There's not just four or five. There's a lot of them out there. And all those, they're not overly, none of these are very overly expensive yet, other than maybe the black milk snake might be the priciest one of all of these so far. And then after that, you get into the more pricier ones where you have the IMG boas, where it's a little bit more variable, and they're usually a little bit more on the pricier side because they're still a very sought after animal. There's the Motley Golden Childs, which just because of how large they are, they usually come with a, large, a bigger price tag. And there's a whole lot of other costs going into it between caging and heating and lighting and food and everything else like that. So it's a little bit more on the pricier side. Then there's the Texas and Eastern Indigos. The Texas aren't, um, you can still ship those. They're still imported because they're not endangered, but there are two phases of those, reds and whites, and they have a lot of red and white on their undersides. The Texas Indigos, um, not the Texas, the Eastern Indigos have a, just a small amount, which like kind of like a little red blushing right on their cheeks. And those might, will probably run you the most expensive out of all of those. So wide variety of different options to choose from if you want something other than a Mexican Black King Snake, or if you're like me and you like to just collect a bunch of stuff and you want to get a little bit of everything. These are my only two solid black animals, but we're working on that. So hopefully you enjoyed the video. Sorry, it was a little bit kind of a rantier one, but just want to throw out a bunch of different ones that maybe you didn't think about or even knew were there or some fun alternatives to just the Mexican Black King Snake. So once again, hopefully you enjoyed the video and hope you're having a great day. We'll check you next time for more reptile content.